Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to this video uploaded by the elder brother Karataza, all right, the head of the GMS branch at Las Vegas, Nevada. As you can see, his page, GMS Vegas, sit downs 144K. Subscribe and be edified. The title of the video that I will be responding to is Be Careful Challenging Apostle Paul's Position and Authority. His ministry was solidified by prophecy. All right, and um, the position he took was beautiful in this lesson, and I think you brothers and sisters should watch it. And um, before I get into this lesson, I want to start by saying we're not doing this out of strife and envy, as particular of you men who are watching, you know, are um, putting on the comment boards. All right, we're simply defending the volume of the book as we believe in the volume of the book. All right, the Holy Scriptures. All right, the Rahakwadash, Holy Spirit has been sent down from on high. All right, through Hamashiach Yahawashai to give us understanding. All right, so as we see men, you know, rebelling against the writings of Apostle Paul, we're simply defending, all right, the volume of the book. This has nothing to do with our jealousy or hatred, you know, for a particular camp, all right? And if you're looking at it that way, then ultimately you're simple, all right? And you don't understand what's going on. And ultimately, just stay away from our pages, all right? We were set, all right, as the Apostle Paul himself said, for the defense of the gospel, all right? And we understand that sheep are extremely simple, all right? It could go astray at any time. So, as the Apostle Paul said, all right, I am jealous over you speaking to the church with godly jealousy, all right, for his determination, all right, was to what? Espouse you unto one husband, all right, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, that I may present you as a chaste virgin, all right, to as a matter of fact, let's start off there. All right. <clears throat> Second Corinthians, the 11th chapter. All right. Second Corinthians 11 and 1. Okay. Paul defends his apostleship. All right. I'm going to read this one in the NLT verse 1. I hope. You will put up with a little more of my foolishness. Please bear with me, all right, because it can seem foolish to do these videos, you know, getting at other camps, you know, going hard the way we go, all right? But the purpose of him doing what he did and the purpose of us doing what we do is that what? For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, all right, because our people are, 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 you know, simply ready to go astray. That's the nature of a sheep. So he's basically, I've espoused you to one husband, and that's through the gospel. That I may present you as a chaste virgin, all right, to Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Hamashiach, right? For if he that cometh preacheth another Yahawashai, whom ye have we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, all right, ye might well bear with him. And a lot of our people, are listening to these differences of opinions and they're being swayed this way, that way. Our job, as Paul's job was, was to keep your mind straight on according to the gospel, all right? Which Paul's gospel, 
all right, was to be an administer of grace, all right, as the beloved, all right, elder brother Karatazar was going into. Now, I'm going to go to the prophecy because, again, going to this video, the title of is be careful challenging Apostle Paul's position and authority. His ministry was solidified by prophecy. So let's go to the book of 2nd Ezra, the second chapter. All right. 2nd Ezra, the second chapter. And we're going to go to Let's see here. All right, second address, the first chapter in the 37 verse, it says, I take to witness the grace of the people to come whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they had not seen me with bodily eyes yet in spirit, they believe the thing that I say. All right. I take to witness the grace of the people to come. All right. Now, as we know. All right. The Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners. All right. The unnatural branches, the wild olive tree would be justified. All right. By faith through grace. And that is what Paul's ministry was ultimately all about to administer grace unto the hearers of the word. All right. Which was scattered throughout all of these regions. All right. And we know the Apostle Paul. All right. Was born. All right, in Tarshish of Cilicia, which when you get Second Maccabees, the fourth chapter, we know that that was a city that was conquered by Antiochus. All right, so ultimately Paul knew how to speak Greek. All right, Paul also was a Jew. All right, so it made sense that the Heavenly Father set him up all right, as the apostle that will go speak, all right, to these Israelites who have been scattered, all right, and had fell away to Greco-Roman customs, all right, but the way that they would be justified was through a grace period, all right, which that is ultimately Apostle Paul's, all right, apostleship. He was sent to these various different churches scattered throughout these regions, okay, to ultimately promote grace, all right, now, let's go to the scriptures, all right, that was a prophecy by Ezra, all right, which ultimately is speaking to the very apostleship of Apostle Paul, all right, this is John 1 and 17, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right. Now, as you read the scriptures, all right, you'll notice that the Apostle Paul is always speaking of grace. What is grace for us as Hebrew Israelites? All right. As the scriptures say, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right. Now, we know that we as the Israelites received the first covenant. All right. Which was the agreement we made with the Most High via the mediator Moses. As you get Exodus, the 24th chapter. All right. And ultimately, we broke that covenant. All right. Grace. All right. Gives us as Israelites the ability. All right to not be justified by the standard of the first covenant, but to be justified by faith. As the scriptures say, you're not under the law, but under grace. That should be in Romans, the sixth chapter. All right. In the 14th verse, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. See, Paul harped on these things because ultimately it was his job to go and preach grace and truth, all right, unto the scattered Israelites who would be justified by faith, all right, not by their obedience or adherence, 
all right, to the technicalities of that first covenant. And see, we are an extension of those churches as we have been scattered, all right, to the Americas, Babylon the Great, which is the uttermost part of the earth, all right, and also throughout the four corners of the earth. How are we going to be brought into the fold? It would be through what? Faith, all right? But the only way to be justified by faith is through a grace period, which we are under that grace period right now. All right. Verse 15. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. So the law, statutes and commandments are still. All right. A uh, schoolmaster. They are still a uh, something that we look to, you know, to, you know, govern ourselves and we keep it to the best of our ability. But ultimately, we have been brought to Yahweh Shai, all right, which ultimately now we walk in the spirit, walking in the spirit, all right, keeping the faith is fulfilling the law, all right, but we are not under the law, all right, we are under grace, yet that does not give you free reign to do as thou wilt, Romans 11 and 5, even so then at this present time, there is a remnant according to the election of grace all right so it says and if by grace then it is no more of works which the first covenant standard was that ultimately your obedience to the law all right was how you were justified under grace your faith in the hearing all right of the word because let's let's go back to second uh, uh second edges the first chapter real quick what did it say? Second Edges, the first chapter in the 37 verse. And when the brother brought this out, it hit me. All right. It says, I take to witness the grace of the people to come. All right. Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit, they believe the thing that I say. All right. And when you get Acts, the 10th chapter, all right, that's ultimately what the apostles were doing. They were going and teaching, all right, what they had saw, the resurrection, the miracles that he is, all right? Speaking of the son of the most high, all right, this is Acts chapter 10, all right? And 37, that word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, all right, as they went and taught and spoke to the circumcision, those Jews who were in Judea, all right, and began from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached, all right, how that the most high anointed Yahweh of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, see, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and with power, all right, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him, okay, and we are witnesses of all the things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, all right, whom they slew and hanged on the tree, all right, God raised him up the third day and showed him openly, not to all people, but unto witnesses chosen before the Most High, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Okay. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that is, it is he which was ordained of God. All right. To be judge of quick. All right. And dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth on him shall re re receive remission of sins, all right? While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all of them which heard the word, okay? And and they of the circumcision which believed in Yahweh Shai were astonished, and as many as come with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, all right? The gift of the Holy Spirit. So ultimately, as we're reading here, all right, Ezra is prophesying of this very day, all right? But who did the Lord use as the vessel 
to go and prophesy and teach these things, all right, unto these scattered Israelites. It was the Apostle Paul. So again, I take to witness the grace of the people to come, all right, which we are a part of this, all right, whose little ones rejoice in gladness, and though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say through the prophets, all right, through the men sent. And Apostle Paul, all right, Galatians, the second chapter, okay, as a matter of fact, let's get Galatians, the first chapter, all right, and if you notice, Paul always spoke of grace, okay, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, and God, the Father, who raised him from the dead, so he's an apostle, not sent by men, not doing his own thing, but he's an apostle sent by Yahweh Shai and all right, the Most High, the Father, who raised Yahweh Shai from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you. See, grace be to you. He was sent to administer grace, all right, which was contrary to how you were made righteous under that first covenant. See, grace be unto you and grace gives you the ability and a time frame to be justified by faith. Okay, and we'll get to that. Grace be unto you in peace from God the Father and from our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. All right, now as you keep going. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see here. Um... I'll just get to the point. First, I'll read here. Verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. Neither I received it of men. Neither was it taught. All right. Was I taught it. But by the revelation of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Okay. For ye have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jews religion. Which what was that? The law, statutes, commandments. The first covenant. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of, of God and wasted it. Okay. So Paul, you know, he had to undergo a lot. You know, his position and his history, you know, a lot of people looked at him crazy. A lot of the Jews said that he, you know, spoke against the laws. You know, a lot of the, 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 the people who, you know, were followers of Yahweh Shah didn't trust him. All right. But he is a vessel chosen to administer grace unto the scattered Israelites. Watch this. All right. Uh, and profited in the Jews religion, which is the law, statutes, commandments, the first covenant above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. He persecuted the church because ultimately he looked at the followers of Yahweh Shai. All right. As ultimately. All right. Uh, uh, doing their own thing. What the hell you mean that you, you, you can now be justified by grace? No, y'all got to keep these laws. Y'all fall, y'all fallouts, which goes back to attention that stems back to the book of Maccabees. This is why you must know the history to understand the mystery. Okay, those who were Jews who were raised in the customs looked down on those who were castaways and fell away. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. All right. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. And after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. All right. And where is the letter where Peter and any of the other apostles are warning you that Paul's writings are trash? All right. Or, or, or not the word of God. We don't get that. All right. So basically what you just read was that Paul's. OK. Uh, uh, his 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 gospel, his ministry was to reveal his son. All right. To reveal the most high son in him to preach. All right. Yahweh Shai among the heathen, which the Israelites were scattered among the heathen and had fell away to those idols so paul's ministry was prophesied 
all right, here, okay, in a book, all right, of First Edges, the 37th chapter, I take to witness the grace of the people to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness, and though they have not seen me with bodily eyes yet, in spirit they believe the thing that I say, all right, and the apostles who walk with Yahweh Shai, and those who saw the miracles went preaching, all right, among these regions, and then, all right, they had to go to the scattered Israelites, whose office, all right, was it to go and preach among the heathen, Galatians 2 and 7. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, all right, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, see, Peter and the other apostles remained in Jerusalem, Judea, you know, in these regions, because ultimately they were over the churches of the believers in Yahawashai in Jerusalem. But Paul was sent to administer grace unto the Israelites scattered among the heathen in these various different regions. Okay? For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, these are the heads of the churches, perceive the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So the heathen are the uncircumcision. The uncircumcised Israelites. Let's get Romans 2 and 25. For circumcision verily profited if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. So, so who were the uncircumcision? Those who were raised as heathen and were not keeping the laws. Okay. But through Yahweh Shai, all right, they can be cleansed through belief, through faith. And that is how we are brought in. And the only way we can have that is through a grace period. Now, what I did here was I just typed in grace. So we're just going to read a few of these scriptures so that ultimately we could see that Ezra's prophecy of those who would come in through grace through the hearing of the word, though they didn't see Yahweh Shai face to face. They didn't see the miracles face to face. They didn't see him after he rose. All right. Because Paul tells you, and let's get first Corinthians, the uh, 15th chapter. <clears throat> all right. And here it lets you know that Paul, all right, he spoke Greek. So it would make sense that he was the one set up as a vessel to go and teach these scattered Israelites because they had fell away to the Greco-Roman customs, all right, and primarily spoke Greek. But what I'm getting here is the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. As a matter of fact, let me get it here so we can uh, also have the NLT um, pulled up. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. So again, Paul's ministry is solidified by prophecy as the beloved Elder Karatas, I went into, and that's bad. I'm just land back and off of this, brother. All right, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 15 uh, and 1. I'm gonna read it in LT, I'm gonna read it quick. Let me now remind you, dear brothers and sisters, of the good news I preached unto you. You welcomed it then, and you still stand firm in it. It is the good news that saves you if you have faith. All right. Because remember, primary to grace, what were we under as Israelites? We were under that first covenant standard. All right. And falling away to all of these idols, being raised as, as heathen, being, you know, you know, a, a wild olive tree. All right. We, we were brought in contrary to nature, as the scriptures say. All right. Contrary to nature. Let's see here. Let's see if I can find that. Romans 11 and 24, if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, wild meaning you weren't cultivated in the law, statutes and commandments, all right, and were grafted contrary to nature, 
into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which are natural branches be grafted into their own tree? The natural branches were the Jews raised in the customs. We were grafted in contrary to nature, grafted in contrary to the law, statutes and commandments through belief in what was heard. And that will be ushered in through a grace period. So it is the good news, 1 Corinthians 15 and 2, that saves you. If you continue to believe the message I told you, unless, of course, you believe something that was never true in the first place, I pass on to you that was most important, all right, and what had also been passed on to me. Yahweh Shai died for our sins, just as the scripture said, okay, showing you that the Corinthians he's speaking to are Israelites. He was buried and he was raised from the dead. And on the third day, just as the scripture said, he was seen by Peter and the 12. After that, he was seen by more of 500 of his followers. After he rose from the dead, he broke bread with them 40 days and 40 nights, particular brothers and sisters. At one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Those who saw him, a lot of them died. Okay. At the point that he's writing this letter. Okay. And who was the last who walked with Yahweh Shai to die? It was John the Baptist. I mean, John, John the Revelator. All right, not John the Baptist, John the Revelator. Then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles, last of all, as though I had been born at the wrong time, I also saw him. For I am least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. All right, but whatever I am now, it is all because God poured his out his special favor on me and not without results for I have worked harder than any of the other apostles as he had to travel. See, the other apostles remain in those regions in Jerusalem. All right. Now, after Paul died, Peter did write a letter to those churches. All right. And that's where you get the book of Peter. All right. That was after Paul died when you go into the history. And when you get that, Peter, who was ahead of the circumcision, what did he say? First Peter's one and, and one, Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shai, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. He himself wrote a letter to the scattered Israelites elect according to the foreknowledge of the God, the father through sanctification of the spirit. Unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shad. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Okay? He's writing to those scattered Israelites, all right, as well. The head of the church is writing to the scattered Israelites, all right, because Apostle Paul was no longer around here, all right? And in this very letter, he warned. That people are going to ultimately stumble at Paul's writings. In this letter. Okay. So. Paul is saying here, 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, but whatever I am now, it is all because God poured out a special favor on me and not without results for I have worked harder than any of the other apostles yet. It was not I, but the most high who was working through through me by his grace. So it makes no difference whether I preach or they preach, for we all preach the same message. All right. That you have believed. And what was that? That Yahweh Shai raised from the dead. All right. And these Gentiles who were scattered, though they didn't see Yahweh Shai after he rose, they didn't walk with him directly. They believed the message. All right. Of those who were sent. All right. And who was sent unto them? The Apostle Paul. All right. And then certain men were added unto him, Barnabas and so forth. But let's just type in grace and you'll notice that in Paul's letters, he's always saying grace. Romans 1 and 5, by whom we have received grace. All right. Which is a gift. The Lord didn't have to give us grace. The Lord could have kept us under that first covenant standard to where ultimately we would never be brought back. But now we can be justified by faith, belief in what we hear, belief that he rose from the dead without even being back there when he did. 
That within itself is spiritual power. That is a gift. You see, now we can be justified by faith. Okay. Let's type those two in real quick. All right. Faith, grace. Faith, grace. <laughs> See? Ephesians 2 and 8. By grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Let's look up this word grace. All right. Which John the Baptist, I believe his name means grace. All right. No, nah, no, nah, not that. One second here. Grace. Cheris. Okay. Grace. That which affords joy, pleasure, delight. <laughs> All right. Kindness, favor. It's a benefit. Okay. And ultimately, that's what we're under. So now we can operate not having, you know, to 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 mentally. All right. Be condemned by the fact that we can't meet that first covenant standard. We don't have a high priest after the order of Aaron. We're not in Jerusalem. We're scattered away. So how will we be brought back? It will be through this gift called grace. Where you can believe on the message of Yahweh Shai and be justified. All right. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Okay. And not of yourselves. It is the gift of the most high. Not of works lest any man should boast. And that's what many of the Jews were doing. They were boasting in their works thinking that they had an advantage over. All right. The Israelites who have been scattered. Who have been brought in contrary to nature. Which nature is what? The natural way that a Jew is supposed to live. Now. Finish it off. We're just going to go through some of these scriptures that say grace. Okay. Acts 13. You know, now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Okay. <laughs> so grace was at the forefront of Paul's ministry. All right, Acts 15 and 11, but we, we believe that through grace of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, we shall be saved even as they. All right, both Jew and Greek, which the Greeks were the Hellenized Jews who were scattered throughout these regions. Okay, that's why Paul said, remember, ye were Gentiles carried away by these dumb idols. Okay. And Paul chose Silas and departed. All right, being recommended by the brethren. All right, unto the grace of God. Okay. Acts 18 and 27. And when he was disposed to pass to Achai, Achaya, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, helped them much who had believed through grace. Okay. Acts 20 and 24. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear to myself. This is Paul speaking so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry, which I received through the Lord, Yahweh Shai to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Okay. Acts 20 and 32. And now brethren, I commend you to God and to uh, the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them all, which are sanctified. Romans 1 and 5, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for the obedience to the faith among all nations, because Israel was scattered among all nations for his name. Romans 1 and 7, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace and peace unto you. All right. So you notice Romans 3 and 24 being freely justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Yahweh Shai. OK. Romans 4 and 16, therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise. All right. Might be 
sure to all the seed, not only that which is of the law, but also that which is of the faith of Abraham, who was uncircumcised, right? Was not Abraham uncircumcised when he was doing all of these great acts and when he received all of these great promises? So Romans, the fourth chapter, cuts anyone who's of the opinion that you have to be circumcised to receive the spirit, to, to be saved. And that was a big thing back then. And a lot of you people who, 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 who are on these comment board, you don't understand what's going on. You just like who you like. All right. But when you see an Israelite uh, bucking up against the authority of someone as high as Apostle Paul and as important as Apostle Paul, that should be a red flag to you. I'm not doing this, this video to do uh, I hate Sakari. Hey, look, I hope that they repent and stop teaching that madness. But do you realize what you're saying when you say the letters of Apostle Paul are not authorized by the most high. See, Apostle Paul's position was different than that. All right. His apostleship going and teaching these Israelites who were scattered uh, that they can be brought in through 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 faith, you know, and, and teaching about grace. That ruffled a lot of feathers. And that's why Peter warned. Look, you're going to see a lot of people stumbling over Paul's writings. OK. Let's get it. Our beloved brother, Paul. <laughs> Second Peter's three, as he's writing to the scattered Israelites. All right. Second Peter's three and 15 in the account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him through Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, have written unto you. Also in all of his epistles, he didn't say one of them, speaking in them things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they, which are unlearned and unstable, rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. See? Yet therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked because you had these particular men coming amongst these scattered israelites trying to you know tell them look paul's going off you got to be you, you got to keep the law perfectly that's how you're saved all right and be led away with the error of the wicked from the fall of your own steadfastness but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our lord yahweh shah hamashiach all right, to him be glory and both now and forever amen. So hopefully this is making sense unto you. Romans 5 and 2. By whom also, through Yahweh Shai, we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand. We're under grace. We're standing in grace, which is a period, all right, where you get yourself together, you believe. You keep the laws to the best of your ability. You be an upstanding brother. You do the work. Okay. And ultimately that fulfills prophecy because that's what the remnant would do pursuing to uh, 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 Esdras. Though we didn't see him with bodily eyes, we believe the things that he say through grace, a grace period. Okay. <laughs> and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So. Romans 5 and 20, moreover, the law entered that offense might abound, all right, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, see? So now our sins could be cast into the sea pursuant to the book of uh, 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 Micah, the seventh chapter, and we can be justified by what? Faith, which is a gift. The water of Yahweh Shemel Shai, we needed that because we're at a disadvantage according to the law through the flesh, and through the captivity we live in. Esau has set up a system to where keeping the law is illegal. So what are we going to do? Lean on the blood of Yahweh Shai, man. All right? For you, we just read, we already read that. Okay? So... Paul constantly boasted in that grace. 
All right. The grace of our Lord be with you all. Aman. He always talked about grace. All right. First Corinthians one and three. Grace be unto you in peace. Grace. The grace of the most high, which is given by Yahweh Shai. See? Grace. First Corinthians 15 and 10. But by the grace of the most high, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Great. He always talked about grace. So you should get it by now. We ain't, we we got to keep going. All right. Galatians 1 and 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Yahweh Shah into another gospel. All right. That you had to be ultimately perfect in the law. That's what those Jews who were coming amongst the church of Galatia were teaching. Okay. And then here you see Galatians 2 and 9. We read that where the, the, the heads of the church understood that grace was given unto Paul. All right. To go unto the heathen that were scattered. All right. Among these nations, man, the Israelite foreigners. Galatians 2 and 21, for I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law. Then Yahweh Shai is dead in vain. Galatians 5 and 4, Yahweh Shai has come of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Brethren, grace of our Lord be with you. All right, Ephesians is a good one. All right, to the church at Ephesus, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. Okay? Man, that whole chapter in Ephesians 1 is good. I might just go through that, Lord willing. All right? As a matter of fact, let's get Ephesians. I'll just read a few of those and then we'll close it out. Um, so hopefully this made sense. You know what I'm saying? Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Shai, by the will of the Most High, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Okay? Grace be to you. Peace. So, so basically, Timothy's words are not the words of God. Was not he sent by Paul to the church of Ephesus? Who were doing all kind of madness that he had to check? All right, when he say, I suffer not a woman to teach, Jake was worshiping the goddess Diana and brought that into the church. Paul had to check these things as he went to these scattered Israelites. And his letters apply today because we are living in a, in a, in a, uh, 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 an Ephesus like, all right, environment where all of these idols and gods are being exalted. So we have to teach these things to the churches. We are an extension of these churches. So to say Paul's letters ain't the word of God, you going off. You need to repent, man. Grace be unto you and peace from God, our Father, and from the Lord, Yahweh Shai. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according as he has chosen us before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. All right. And having predestinated us. And how could we be blameless and holy without grace? Hmm? Having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. See, we're accepted in the beloved through the glory of his grace, in whom we have redemption through his blood, all right, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The only way and the only ability you're able to have forgiveness of sins and be justified is by faith. But that's through a grace period where you can operate outside of the technicalities of the first covenant, man. And Paul was sent as in a vessel to preach Yahweh Shai among the Gentiles, man. So we're in his stead through the Holy Spirit, man. Okay? So so much more but you know th that's it man all right philippians 1 and 2 grace be unto you all right grace the grace of our lord be with you colossians grace he's talking grace speaking grace to these scattered israelites man 
Okay, Timothy, grace, grace. Read all of these scriptures. Timothy's, 1 Timothy's 1 and 14, and grace of our Lord, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Yahweh Shai. Grace and peace, Philemon. Hebrews, grace. Okay? Hebrews 4 and 16, which, you know, they also say this is not the word of God. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. How are we in a time of need? Because we need mercy. We need our sins to be covered. And that's in the blood of Yahweh Shai. Okay? James spoke of grace. Peter spoke of grace. So... I wish I can read all of these, but I got to roll out. Hopefully I will edify it on to the next. So again, as the elder brother said, Paul's ministry is solidified by prophecy. Ezra prophesied that the grace of those who were to come through the hearing of the word, do not seeing him with bodily eyes, all right, would spring up, man. And we're fulfilling that now. And those Gentiles back then were fulfilling it. Shalom.